any questions of the PO program. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Vicki. Um, just want to say hello to everyone. Uh, so my name is Matt Parenti. I'm the program director. Uh, I'm just going to actually switch over to a, uh, a little presentation for you just to talk a little bit about our program uh, and and what we have going on here to, to share today. So hopefully you guys can see this. Uh, so like I said, my name's Matt Parenti. I'm the program director uh, with us. Um, one of our, our special invitees is, and panelists is Miss Alicia Heacock. And Alicia is a member, or she's been with the university for five years now. Uh, so she came through this BA, uh, Bachelor's of Science and Health Science pathway and is now um, anticipating graduating in a couple of months. Uh, so she's a second year graduate student, um, well on her way. And so I figured Alicia would be a uh, great liaison, a great uh, person to, to ask some questions to um, for, for you guys. You know, a lot of people say this is often the a field of where, where art meets science. And so, you know, we, we like to think that we're more than just scientists, we're more than just artists, that there's a lot more to this picture. Uh, overall, if you're still wondering what this is all about, you know, we think about prosthetics versus orthotics and a prosthesis versus an orthosis. And so basically one of the things we have to ask is, does the patient still have the anatomy? And so when I talk about a prosthesis or prosthetics, we're talking about the artificial limb. When we talk about orthotics or an orthosis, we're talking about something that supports the limb or the spine or, or whatever is still remaining uh, there. And that's an orthotic device. You know, overall, what, what do we need to know? And so when we look at uh, your future education, by the time you graduate with your master's degree, we know that you're going to have a strong knowledge of, of anatomy, biomechanics, material science, philosophy, psychology, computer science, physics, tissue mechanics, a little rehabilitation science, research, engineering, design, marketing, statistics, and, and more, uh, you know, and so when, you know, we, we have to do that, we do that through our pathways. And so through our pathways, we look at the undergraduate programs as our starting point of laying the foundation of science. If you look at our three pathways in our Department of Rehab Science, we have the Bachelor's in Exercise Science, we have the Bachelor's of Science into the Doctorate of Physical Therapy, then we have the bachelor's of science and health science into the masters of prosthetics and orthotics, which is, which is the program that we're, we're most concerned about. Not, not concerned, interested, we're most, most interested in. Within our graduate programs, within the Department of Rehab Sciences, we have our doctorate of physical therapy program and then our master's program, uh, master's of science in prosthetics and orthotics. And so, again, the one that we hold near and dear to our hearts is the uh, MSPO program. It all has to start somewhere. And so looking at our pathway, we, it, for our program, it's a three plus two. So three years of undergraduate um, coursework and then two years of graduate coursework. And so what we do is we ensure that uh, you have the foundational sciences. So even though it may not appear that there's a lot of coursework or content here at the undergraduate level uh, that has to deal with prosthetics and orthotics, I want you to think about that list that I had up there earlier about all the foundational sciences and things that we have to know in order to work with our patients. Uh, so we have uh, contained within your first three years, we also have the requirements for a bachelor's degree. And that those requirements are consistent throughout the state, uh, throughout um, the university, and they meet our protocols as well uh, as you identify 
as a college graduate. So when you get the 120 credit hours in specific areas, that helps to give you your, you, your um, uh, course of study or your content area. For us, the initial part is that Bachelor's of Science in Health Sciences. One of the things that we look, look at is that if uh, we do take in, we have our own internal pathway, we also have an external pathway. And if you decided to apply to our external pathway, you would still need to take many of these courses because these are prerequisite courses. These prerequisite courses are, are what we consider a great predictor of success. They help to give you the tools and everything that you need in order to uh, continue at the graduate level. Embedded within this, uh, this pathway, one of the things that you may see is right down here, PRPO 200. That stands for pre-prosthetics and orthotics, and it's a 200 or a sophomore level course. That intro to prosthetics and orthotics is in the fall of your sophomore year because we, we do a symposium style of teaching of all the courses and content that you will see at the graduate level. So for instance, I teach a uh, about a two and a half hour lecture on above the knee prosthetics. And one of the things Alicia will tell you is that when you get it to the graduate level, that course is four hours a week uh, throughout the entire you know, 15 week semester. So we just scratched the surface in this pre-prosthetics and orthotics course. And what we like to tell our students that is if that's not the most interesting course in your schedule, if that's not the course that just really grabs you and says, and says I wanna learn more about this, at that point, then we, we need to see if this is the pathway that you still want to be on. Embedded in that course itself, we also now have a shadowing experience and shadowing opportunity to make sure that we have you out in a clinic and that you're able to see what clinical practice looks like as opposed to um, what you might see on the day to day uh, or what you may, may believe that clinical practice looks like. In the junior year, what we have are the remaining courses and content to help prepare you for the graduate level as well. These are some a uh, little bit higher level courses. You know, we have physics, higher level physics, uh, psych, stats, anatomy, uh, functional anatomy, and then uh, additional entry stuff into the profession. If you look at our degree pathway, when you compare it to other programs, uh, you might say, well, Matt, in a lot of places, we see a lot of places for electives. There are a lot of universities and or colleges. We see places for electives. Can I still have a minor? Of course, you can still have a minor. We have some that work within our pathways, um, such as psychology. Um, we've had business minors. We've had other minors before. But the thing is, is that since this is a three plus two, in order to try to condense your education, get you through those prerequisite courses and allow you to elevate into the graduate level and essentially save you a year of tuition. So uh, in some ways, if we're saving you uh, going from, from six years down to five, uh, in, you might look and say, Matt, that's already a 18% savings or 16.7% or savings in my overall tuition. And you're right, it is. But we wanna make sure that we're able to get our students through this pathway uh, and, and stay focused in the three plus two master's degree, entry level master's degree. And we, we are the only program in the country that has this option. So working into the summer content, we have our gross anatomy, kinesiology, and clinical foundations. And with that, that content, what you'll see is it's dual listed, meaning that there's a pre-prosthetics and orthotics, so you're still qualified as an undergrad, but you're also taking that coursework with the graduate students, the external students that come in. So while they're in their 
uh, fifth year, you're finishing your third. So the accelerated pathway that this creates is, uh, is truly uh, an advantage. Then when we get to the graduate level, uh, essentially your fourth year is considered your senior year and the courses are still dual listed as we have, um, as you may notice over here, we have dual listed content. And what that means is that you are still using that content to complete the credit, the credit count to get your bachelor's degree, but you're taking graduate level coursework. So it's dual listed and therefore it can count for master's level content as well because you're taking master's level courses side by side with master's students. We get into internships uh, and our professional level content, including lower limb orthotics, transtibial prosthetics, and more of our uh, true prosthetics and orthotics uh, based content is, is in the third, in the fourth year and fifth year. So that's the, the graduate level uh, content. You know, a lot of the behind the scenes stuff that we have to establish in those first three years, you know, what we teach you is what really goes into some of the forces and everything else to build a prosthesis. So you start to understand how to do that. And we take all that knowledge to actually form that prosthesis and help with socket design and, and some of the advanced biomechanics and principles and componentry. And there's a lot of good stuff there. So we do that behind the scenes so that you have a better understanding of what goes into uh, the actual prosthesis itself. How do we do it? Well, we like to say that we prepare you uh, to become problem solvers. And so in order to be a problem solver, you have to have an understanding of all, of all the criteria that goes into uh, making that decision. I like to say we use situational patient specific problem solving. If you're into acronyms, that's not a good one because it sounds like you're trying to tell a secret. It just says, Psst. sorry, dad joke. But anyways, the other side of this, when we look at how do we solve problems, we do this in all aspects of our lives uh, because no two patients are the same. We need to consider all the things that, that come into play. Uh, my wife and I, we have, uh, we have twins, and when we went to the park and there was only one swing, we had to use our situational problem-solving skills in order to make sure that both twins were able to go on that swing. Even though they don't look too happy here, they were happy once we started them swinging. So there's my girls. Like I said, uh, as a father of... Uh, of three daughters, uh, I understand about the, uh, the things that happen as we, as we try to show development and growth. We show this through examples. And here I, you're watching my two-year-old at one point, uh, she went over to her little kitchen set, she pulled out the creamer, she put down two cups and, and all of a sudden she started pouring and there she was uh, drinking. I'm going, where in the world did she learn this from? Uh, it didn't take long for us to realize where she learned that. And so we use a very similar style here, uh, not just what I do at home. Yes, we had two coffee makers for a while, um, but we do that in the classroom setting as well. Uh, we do that with hands-on. Uh, we do that with a lot of experience, You not, not just watching and observing, but also doing. And so, you know, if you thought that, wow, Matt's even taught his two-year-old how to make his coffee, uh, not quite, but it, we know under, we understand the learning process. And that's something we do day in, day out. We do it here by having our students get their hands on the componentry, working, designing, and building, and doing a lot of these things. On, on the main campus, we do have a new building coming in the fall of 2021 uh, that's being built in the, uh, in the space right near uh, Dana Hall where some of our faculty offices are. So this is where 
Uh, oops, I got turned around. Uh, Dana Hall's over here. I'm sorry. Uh, and so with Dana Hall, that's where our rehab sciences department is. But inside the new facility, we're going to have our research lab. Uh, contained within our research lab, we have several different partnerships with organizations and some research going on that, that's uh, pretty exciting stuff. Here we have uh, just showing you the, the building still, uh, you know, 60,000 square foot space, uh, having our prosthetics and orthotics lab in there is, is going to be a great addition to um, to what our program has to offer. Uh, we have a lot of potential partnerships with the engineering program as well as with our um, DPT and rehab science, exercise science, occupational therapy, uh, all patient focused um, organizations and groups that we're gonna looking, that we look forward to working with uh, even more in the future. You know, we, you know, they say the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And, and the thing I want you guys to remember, uh, you know, that you got to take that first step. And with our education, as, as much as you guys might say, well, we're ready. We want to start seeing patients. We want to start working and building prostheses. We need to build up your strength. We need to build up your your ability to problem solve. We need to build your learning skills. We need to build all these things in a foundational way so that when you get out there to see the patients, that's when you're gonna have success. Um, there's me, university. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing our screen. There we go. Uh, one of the, one of the things that, uh, you know, just wanted to make sure that you guys, um, ha had the understanding of, you know, and, and I'll, I'll turn over to Alicia for a second and, or in a second, uh, to let you guys know one of, one of our driving principles that we like to say is that our, our program is, uh, built on graduation through cooperation and, Normally, people that get into healthcare fields are, are extremely giving and understanding and wanting to help others. And that's part of the environment that we've, we've tried to build here uh, so that our students understand that uh, they need to identify their strengths, uh, to work with them, to minimize their weaknesses clinically, uh, but also to understand about the people around them, how to incorporate teamwork and how to work with each other. That is why for our students that start with us as freshmen, uh, you have minimum, a minimum GPA to, re, to uh, maintain of a 3.2 GPA and nothing below a C. And so those are the standards. And so in that sense, you are your own competition. You're not worried about uh, people that went to other universities or other, other programs or colleges that want to come in because that's a competitive pool. And so with that competitive pool, it's, it's really difficult to say where the GPA mark is gonna be, where the experiential mark or where any of those other standards are. If you start at the University of Hartford, we can tell you 3.2, nothing below a C, and you have your seat in the program. And what that helps to do is really to foster that, um, that sense of teamwork, of camaraderie. In several of the courses, it's just our prosthetics and orthotics students. You get, to, you get to know those students, you get to work with them. And so, uh, and, and a lot of times they become some of your best friends. Uh, so I'm, I've been talking a lot. Uh, Alicia, I, I would love to, or, or let me, yeah, I'd love to pass the, uh, pass the mic to you to uh, say a couple words or, and then we can 
open up the floor for some questions. Okay. Works. Sure. Um, hello, everyone. My name's Alicia, and thank you, Matt, for the introduction. So, as you can see, I'm in a car. Sometimes we make do with some, you know, problem solving situations, just as Matt was talking about. But I'm really glad that all of you joined this call and we'll open the floor to a QA. I saw that there was already some that came in on the QA button. So we'll address those all. And yeah, so I am in my fifth year at the University of Hartford or my second year in the master's program. Through my time in undergrad, I also minored in psychology as well as Spanish. So there are other opportunities, as Matt was talking about, to fill those electives. And you can discuss options with admissions regarding transfer credits and other ways that you can fit whatever you were interested in into those thoughts of those electives. And yeah, um, I really enjoyed how Matt broke down the components that are really necessary. The courses that there's about one per year of dialogue and then introductory courses of foundational qualities and characteristics that help you in an orthesis and they definitely build on the skills that you will need in graduate studies during your time in undergrad throughout this unique program that is the only one of this style alicia we're, so, we're losing you a bit we're just oh i apologize um, I will be home shortly, so the connection should be better if anyone wants to fill and answer those questions for like the next five minutes. I'm happy to recap on what I just said. Let's, let's do that. So I, okay, folks, great. I do know Alicia was just working on uh, part of her scientific inquiry or research series, uh, and we caught her in, in commute here um, from that. but. Uh, uh, if, if there's any questions, if you want to throw them up on the chat, if you want to unmute or, or let's yeah. see. Matt, there is a couple of questions um, in the Q&A. We can start maybe with the first one. Um, Peter's asking what kind of materials covered in the pre p &O course? So in the pre prosthetics and orthotics course, the 200 level, uh, we, we do it a symposium style. So each of the graduate instructors, so that's part of the nice part as well. Each of the graduate instructors comes in and teaches their uh, specialty, essentially. So we do cover below the knee prosthetics, above the knee prosthetics, upper extremity prosthetics, spinal orthotics, lower limb orthotics. Uh, we do a, a gait and biomechanics uh, presentation. Uh, there's uh, organizations and partnerships and stuff like that. So there's a um, common clinical practice um, is another aspect in that course. Uh, so that is on campus. And so there's a, uh, um, but it's, there's a bunch of topics. And so uh, but it's done in symposium style as opposed to, um, you know, a, a standard uh, pathway course, essentially. Thank you. The other question is, can you minor in BME? It's difficult. So in for BME, the uh, part of the challenges are when when you have course uh, course restrictions time restrictions, and then because we have so many labs, being that we're a heavy science 
So we have physics lab, you have anatomy labs, you have chemistry lab, um, biology lab. Um, there, there's a lot of lab sections that take up larger chunks of time. So logistically, it becomes very difficult. But also, if you're not in the major, uh, if you're within the major, that gives you priority within a course. And so all of our um, all of our graduate courses are major specific. So if uh, no one else can sign into our course, uh, as far as some of the undergrad courses for the intro to prosthetics and orthotics, we, we allow anyone into that, but we also have a 300 level, which you take your junior year, which you have to be major restricted. So um, it, it can be challenging. Um, now, there may be an intro to biomedical engineering, or there might be an intro course uh, that you might be able to take. But to have that pure minor designation, we were able to do it with psych. And uh, I know with, um, we've done business, psych, biology. Uh, another one uh, but basically because of our prerequisites courses cover some of that content already we don't have prerequisite content coverage from the engineering side of things thank you uh, does anyone else have any questions until uh, alicia lands <laughs> if you do please put them in the question and answer box thank you Okay, so here's another one. Um, does the program include all the classes necessary for pre-med? No. Um, so that would be a, um, a health science degree versus the health sciences, uh, or health sciences versus the health science. Um, so uh, we do have that department at the university uh, and which helps with pre-med as far as our content, because our content is built off of uh, our national accrediting body. And so, which is different than medical boards and, and everything else like that. So we, the pre-med side of things, I would say that by the end of your sophomore year at you would you would need to decide on that um, so as far as our as far as our uh seats and everything go i mean we we tend we we hope to take 10 to 12 undergraduate students in the pre-prosthetics and orthotics pathway each year and so uh, so part of that is, you know, ha having that opportunity, you know, and since we're the only program that offers this direct pathway, essentially, I mean, you can, you can confidently say that you have between eight to 10% of the available seats in the country, which is a, which is quite a statement if, uh, um, if you look at it that way, but, um, but there, we do limit the availability. We don't just, we don't accept uh, 20, 30, 40 uh, students into this, into this pathway um, because of the intimate nature of our degree. And it, we need to make sure we have the seats available at the graduate level uh, and that we don't uh, flood the graduate side of, um, of, of what we have here because we need to make sure that for our, uh, for our instructors, for the students, that you, that you guys are getting what you, what you need from, uh, from the class. Any other questions? There's another question uh, about percentage. There's two questions. 
Well, actually, two. One question: How are the summer courses be, in between the bachelor's and master's held? Are they in-person, on-site classes taken over the summer, or can they be taken remotely? So this this past year, um, yeah, there there was a little issue uh, going on. Uh, so this past summer, uh, we actually uh, we we shifted the courses to completely online obviously in the time of pandemics, um, you know, and this being our first pandemic uh, that we've uh, had to deal with, um, we were able to transition relatively smoothly to a completely online um, pathway. The, uh, as we're moving forward next year, uh, we're gonna have it in a hybrid manner. So we will have some content here in person, and then we'll have other content uh, that will be posted online. One of the things we've done for our program is, is a huge shift in uh, the hands-on experience of, uh, of everything. So making sure that, uh, you know, being in an allied health and uh, heavily psychomotor program, you know, meaning taking the knowledge and putting it into a motor application and skill, we need to have hands-on and, and contact uh, with patients, with, 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 um, with simulations and stuff like that. So, uh, so there will be on-site um, activities for um, moving forward. And the other the other little quick message on that, um, another point is that here in our facility uh, in, in, and at the university as well, at the graduate level in both DPT and in PNO, we record all of our courses. We record all the lectures. And so we have a, we, both programs have a, a live videographer right there on site. And so, um, so we capture the lecture and then we record it, we post it to our learning management system or Blackboard. And so our students are able to review, uh, review the content from that course. So if, you know, if, uh, if Alicia wanted to uh, send me an, an email at 1130 at night as she's uh, wrapping up her studying, I probably will not answer it at that hour. But if she said, if she wants to go back and, and hear me say it again, it's available. So it, it works as a great review tool uh, and provides um, a nice supplement to the lecture. The other side is that during your undergraduate time, you build the skills of note-taking and deciphering the critical information and everything else and when we get to the graduate level, knowing that you'll have the notes, you'll have the videos and everything else, it helps our students to really focus on the, on the smaller skills, uh, the clinical pearls as we like to call them, uh, and the finer points of patient care, as opposed to sitting there and feverishly writing and worrying about missing notes. They're focusing on the patient side of things and the, and the care side and the smaller details so that now, when they get to get out to see patients, they have those skills as well. So, so the supplement of having the video um, is a great resource uh, for our students. And we've been doing that for uh, about 18 years. We've, and it's been in development. Uh, and it's a continuing, continually developing process. So this was not a response to COVID. It's something that we've had for, for years. Uh, and multiple camera angles, and live videography, uh, it's, it's a true benefit to our, our students and, and thus then their patients. Alicia, looks like you're, you're stationary now. Yes, yes, I'm home now. Still in the car. Perfect Just timing. Car. Your timing is good. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so just a recap in case I was cutting out on my drive home, I apologize for that, but making the most of the situations because it's really important that I'm able to be here and talk with all of you guys that have made time for this panel. 
And so review, I'm Alicia. I am in my fifth year at the university for my second year of the graduate program. In my time in undergrad, I had dual minors in psychology and Spanish as well. I think the two you are also thinking of, Matt, were Spanish and dance. Those have also been done in recent years. So whatever you're interested in, definitely talk to your faculty members, your advisor, and they can work with admissions. I used a lot of transfer credits to make time for both of those minors. I think that's not generally the norm for the amount of time that someone would have to invest in those, but there's plenty of options to get involved uh, academically. And as Matt was also saying, I just came from a research course. So that is where I am a graduate research assistant under one of our faculty members. I would say, I would say that one of the really great bonuses of being here for the undergrad as well as the grad program is that I got to know the faculty in advance and develop that rapport even from the time I was 18 years old. So that really gave me a sense of comfort. I enjoyed how Matt broke down in his presentation that the courses you take in undergrad are working to develop and establish that foundation as well as, you know, going through and learning your learning styles, studying styles to be able to highlight those clinical pearls and learn what's best for you and how best to advocate for yourself once you get into the meatier topics, so to speak, uh, going forward with summer and the graduate program. And yeah, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have about undergrad, the summer, grad program, life at the university or ins and outs of the program. So if you want to throw them in the chat or the Q&A, um, I'll be here to answer questions from the perspective of a student. Thank you. Looks like we did a great job, Alicia. Yeah, we've had we've had several minors over over the years. I remember, uh, obviously, yours was Spanish, and then dance. Um, you know, there's uh, Brittany did uh, business. Um, you know, we we've had quite a few over the years. I can, I can speak to a couple other little things, and you know, traditionally we hear about questions about studying abroad, um, and is there an opportunity? And so, yes, there still is an opportunity. Uh, it's good to know right from the sooner that you know uh, that you're um, considering studying abroad, the sooner that we can try to. Uh, formulate a, a successful pathway for you so that you're taking courses like your physics and anatomy that you're actually taking them while you're uh, while you're at the University of Hartford as opposed to saying okay I'm going to Brazil for the semester and I'm going to have to take uh, anatomy in a mix of Portuguese and, and English as uh, and you know, of course, it's critical to your long term success, we want to make sure that you're you have those uh, and you feel comfortable while you're doing them here. And so we switch many of your uh, subsequent um, general courses into uh, those semesters, but or that semester. I know, again, it's a different time and, and not everyone's considering travel at this point, but uh, it, it is a possibility. Matt, how large is the course load for the summer program compared to a regular semester? Um, so the summer, <laughs> the summer is is actually eight credits, um, and uh, the normal semester I think we're somewhere 15, 16. Uh, the challenge 
with the, the summer is that uh, when, when you're going along as an undergrad, you, you, you build up speed and you're, you're cruising along and you get to a comfortable place. And so uh, when, we, when you start the summer, essentially you're taking that next step and you start, uh, you, you speed up. And so the summer course is actually uh, challenging in several ways. One is because of the content. So you actually have a higher level of content and understanding and, and everything else that you really need to grasp. But the other challenging part is starting to understand your personal, personal management style of how are you going to logistically handle your time, your studying, your uh, everything else. And so we tell the students this every year and the students always go, and for, for those parents there, yeah, I got it, I got it. No, no, I get it. And then that first summer comes and everyone goes, wow, I didn't expect it like that. Um, so while it may only seem like it's, it's eight or eight credits, um, it's actually a lot deeper in depth uh, than, than any courses that you, you would have had to that point. Some people ask if they can work during, uh, during that time and they say, oh, it's over the summer, I'd like to work. And I highly discourage it. Collectively, I highly discourage it uh, because the easiest thing to do is to get behind. The hardest thing to do is to catch up. And so um, if you feel that in the fall, that you, you, you got straight A's through the summer and now you wanna put in some hours, great. But uh, as soon as your grades start dipping, uh, that's, when, that's when we gotta, we gotta chat and try to get you back on, a, on the straight, straight path. Um, I'll add to that. So the summer semester is also reduced in length. So a normal semester is typically 15 weeks and this one is about 11 weeks uh, from when I went through the program at least. And although it is less credits, keep in mind it's also reduced amount of time. So I would say it's about comparable of the workload, but I think it's a necessary step and transition of the expectations, the academic rigor, the perfecting or at least bettering of your studying techniques and how productive you are with your studying. And it's a great transition, a great step from undergrad to the grad program. So although it does have its challenges, I feel it was a really beneficial part of my educational process. The questions that are up now are um, admissions questions. So Emily is answering those. <laughs> Hello everyone, how's it going? Hi Emily. Good to see you all. Um, thank you guys for some of the admissions questions. My name is Emily Daly. Uh, I am one of the assistant directors of admission here uh, at the university. Um, thank you guys all for tuning in with us today. Um, I did see a couple questions that were more so um, geared towards my office. So I figured I would just come in and answer them uh, in bulk for you guys. So. Um, Basically, first and foremost, um, one of the questions that came in asked about transfer credits um, and how that works um, into the program um, and into the university in general as well, too. So um, we absolutely do accept transfer credits um, at the university here. Um, basically, the way that it works for us is that the courses do need to be at least a 100 level course or higher. Um, and basically, the way it works is um, you need to have at least C minus or better in the course for those um, credits to come over and transfer. Uh, basically, when you apply to the university and send us over all your transcripts, um, we will also simultaneously do, um, you know, for our first year students that are coming in with early college credits, tr any transfer credits from a community college that you might have taken over a summer um, in a dual enrollment in college in a dual enrollment in high school class, um, we will do a credit evaluation for you. So basically, that just tells us, you know, these are the courses that you have coming into the university, and these are how, you know, the courses will be taken be you know 
replaced at the University of Hartford. Um, so they'll go through and do a whole evaluation for you to kind of let you see, you know, how many of those credits are able to be transferable. Um, you know, something to keep in mind as well, too, um, is that for a lot of these programs, you know, whether we're able to, um, you know, whether we're able to bring them in as a, you know, an elective course or, you know, a major based course, uh, anything like that is going to be, you know, based on the evaluator for, um, you know, this, the particular program and the particular school and college. So, um, but yes, the short of it is that we do accept transfer credits. And I also think that Matt has something that he wants to add about it. So come on back in, Matt. I do. Thank you, uh, Emily. Uh, so the, our, our program, does not accept transfer students. Yeah. And so while the university accepts transfer credits, um, because, because we start out as a, as you start as a freshman and we're saying that your GPA needs to be a 3.2. So the university takes um, transfer credits at a C minus or better. So essentially what that would mean is that if you came in with straight C minuses, you could have a 2.2 three GPA and be on par with someone that has started out at the University of Hartford and kept up a 3.3. Uh, so in, in all fairness on that side, that's part of the reason we don't accept transfers. Also, so we don't oversaturate uh, the program. Um, and, and so, so that's, that's part of our policy. We do accept AP credits into, uh, into prerequisite courses and content. And if you do transfer to the University of Hartford and decide to take the health science pathway, oftentimes we would advise uh, the university students that are still interested in applying as a graduate student. So that would mean that you still complete your four-year degree and then apply as an internal candidate um, through through the graduate program. So some, some subtle subtleties, but I just wanted to yeah, stand it up. Yeah, and that's definitely really good to know, you know, for the students as well too. I would say that for most of our um, you know, most of our students who are coming in in programs like prosthetics and orthotics, physical therapy, things like that, you know, that's exactly the case. Um, seeing a lot of, you know, AP credits for pre 